Hello everyone, welcome back. Today tutorial mainly focus on Lambda triggers. As you know, there are many AWS services you can integrate with the Lambda. Uh, the common uh, services I list down here, for example, SQS, SNS, S3, CloudWatch, API Gateway, Amazon DB, and uh, even Bridge. There are many other services too, but these are the more common use cases. For example, if you talk about the S3, let's say if you want to integrate with the S3 with the Lambda, like let new object comes to the S3, the S3 automatically triggers the Lambda and the Lambda function will get all the information about the new object what just pushed to the S3. That's the one of the common scenario. Same way uh, the SQS and SN SNS. With this tutor tutorial, what we're going to do, we coin for each scenario. For example, in this case, we uh, seven, six to seven uh, scenario and show how to integrate with the Lambda. So as usual, if you like my content and please uh, like and subscribe. And the same way, if you have any question, if you are interested with any other, other services, please comment below. So I'll, I'll try my best to get uh, a tutorial for cover those scenario. Thank you so much. Let's get in. As usual, uh, for follow follow this tutorial, you should have to have a, a AWS uh, a account. So if you don't have a AWS account, just go and have a, a create a free account. So all the all the the material, the services I'm going to use here with the, this tutorial, it's uh, under free tier, so you don't don't get any charge. So let's get in. As you can see, I'm in a, a AWS management console. Um, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a Lambda. So if you don't, people who do not uh, family with uh, uh, Lambda, so what you need to do, you need to go and uh, create a uh, search a Lambda on this, this search bar. Once then click on this, uh, the first service, which is called Lambda. Let's uh, wait for it. And currently we don't, I don't have any uh, Lambda uh, function. So what I'm going to create a new Lambda function. Uh, you can give it a name. Uh, so in this case, uh, as you know, you can you can create a Lambda function from the scratch, or use a, a kind of uh, existing template, or you can use the container image. I'm, 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 I'll I'll try to do a, a separate video to container image, how to create a Lambda uh, through the container image. So uh, in this case, what we're gonna, what we're gonna do uh, create uh, from scratch give it a name let's say give it a name as a demo uh, function name function one and uh, the runtime uh, you can select uh, whatever the uh, preferred uh, uh, language but in this case I'm uh, uh, gonna select node.js and architecture yes you can see uh, keep it as a uh, the default otherwise you can if you have if you want to run in apple yes you need to use uh, uh, apple chip if you are running in the apple chip you need to use uh, arm 64. Uh, uh, the the basic uh, execution role keep it as a, a default role it will create a new role and we can keep updating the uh, the role as as we need so let's create the role as uh, it suggests and create uh, click on the create function what does it do? It create a function for you with the bare minimum code, and uh, then after that uh, we will go and start uh, uh, implementing one of the integration. The first integration we gonna we gonna try is S3. Um, the scenario is whenever you uh, the S3 get a new object, it trigger the lambda, and uh, we can see uh, what in the new object and uh, the information about the new object. That's the main scenario we're gonna cover. Right. The one thing is uh, we need to make sure the Lambda function is work. How do we how do we verify the old integration uh, is working with the Lambda integration through the CloudWatch. So for example, when the, the Lambda triggers, we need to see somewhere in uh, logs. So uh, as you can see, this is a bit mi bare minimum code. So what I'm going to do, I'm um, uh, uh, copy uh, the console log, the one line. Basically, we say console log the event. So what I want to see, whenever the, the lambda trigger, I'm console log the whole event. So I can, I can then I can verify the the lambda is trigger for certain condition. For example, S3 bucket when the object goes to the S3, it's trigger the lambda, and we can see in the CloudWatch. 
so that's the main thing i'm going to do uh, as i i added uh, a new uh, code i want to deploy otherwise it's not gonna take the new change so first thing as i mentioned i'm gonna check the cloud watch is working for this uh, lambda so what i'm going to do i'm uh, going to test this function first uh, i'm creating a new event with the private uh, you have to give it a name this is test one let's say test one uh, s3 or oh, uh, doesn't matter like of course this one event let's say test one event and uh, let's say think about the event is in this case test event is something like value one value two or value three doesn't uh, max uh, it's not necessary it, it could be anything uh, but we want to see uh, the logs are goes to the cloud watch and if i click on save uh, right so by default with the default role default roles assigned to this lambda it has access to cloud watch what i'm going to do i'm click on the test uh, button and you can see uh, what is it get in the area based on the index.js it's get the response with the status code uh, 200 with the sum hello from lambda sum string if you go to the execution result as you can see you got the result, result response and plus in the logs what you can see the the event the actual event we are passing and we can see this one in uh, uh, in the if you go to the monitor and uh, uh, view logs in CloudWatch. Uh, give it a second so it's until it's load. And currently, I am in the CloudWatch for particular Lambda function. So these are the logs for particular function. If I open this and uh, you can see the event uh, the event we log it's appearing perfectly it's shown here so the first thing you need to make sure okay this is working the the lambda can talk to a uh, cloud watch and uh, has a permission to log so um i quickly show you the 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 configuration roles the one that it's attached to the diff this lambda lambda function uh, if i open this uh, role as you can see uh, this default roles has a permission this is the roles it got created for you and if you go to the policy as you can see it has a uh, all the the create log they can they can access to uh, cloud watch event for example create log group create log stream pull uh, log event sort of thing so the first integration what we're going to do today is lambda with s3 so for that let's create s3 bucket first so what you can do you can search s3 on top of here in the search bar and i'm opening a new tab s3 on new tab and as you can see i do have a couple of uh, buckets so what i'm going to do i'm creating a new bucket for this demo i'm call it uh, it's a demo uh, demo bucket hopefully i can get this demo bucket yep um, keep it as a, all, all the the configuration as a default and um, click on the create bucket it should okay so because the the bucket name is a global uh, global instance so we need to give a, a unique name seems like someone someone took this um, bucket name already so i'm say not code one just to make sure it's unique and um, um, click on the create bucket as you can see it's uh, the bucket got created and uh, what we're going to do we go back to our lambda function and uh, click on the add triggers so you can click on this add triggers or otherwise you can go to this uh, left menu the left you can see left tab and uh, you can click uh, add triggers whichever uh, whichever suit for you once you click triggers you can see there are many uh, aws services comes uh, which support a uh, lambda integration so uh, you can see there are like bunch of services aws plus there are multiple services outside the the aws you can do some integration with the even for the uh, the third party uh, system so over here what we're going to do we select uh, s3 um, then we can pick the our bucket in our case a demo bucket log to code one and 
uh, these are the some uh, in, in the event type what you can select okay so when do you want to get trigger this lambda in what what are the events in s3 you want to trigger this lambda so there are multiple uh, multiple events you can uh, pick so in this case i'm gonna pick uh, all object create event and uh, but based on the based on your scenario you can pick uh, one of them so maybe for example when the object delete trigger some lambda object create and restore from glacier so there are so many events you can you can use to trigger this lambda in my case i'm creating i'm selecting the all object created and the prefix uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, more likely uh, not on this Cisco, but i'll i'll, uh, I'll have to do a video uh, this one basically say uh, i'm not interested with the, all the object but i'm interested with the particular object which come with uh, some prefix so you can filter some uh, this event basically uh, let's say you want to get uh, the lambda trigger for some object the object start with uh, some name so that's where you can uh, use a prefix and same things for the prefix suffix uh, i'm not going to any do anything i'm said i'm acknowledge and what i'm going to do uh, click on the acknowledge i'm just i'm, I'm acknowledge this one you can read otherwise it's gonna uh, recursively um, uh, do some some effort so you can read this and what i'm going to do i'm click on add this will add uh, integration with the s3 and the lambda so what's gonna happen if i click on uh, details yeah seems uh, it's configured uh, what I'm going to do try now, uh, I'm checking the go to monitor. I'm showing the uh, view log first. Uh, you can go uh, the logs access. You can access the log through uh, click on this lo uh, view logs in CloudWatch, or otherwise you can go. Uh, you can search CloudWatch. Uh, CloudWatch and you can pick the actual lambda so basically i'm going to the loud watch and go to the logs and select the logs group and after that you can uh, pick the actual lambda so in our case the demo function um, so this is the two ways you can access this cloud i'm click on oh, oh, um, uh, so go to the cloud watch i'm open the uh, one of the logs. This is something I, I had uh, previously, right? Now I'm going to S3 bucket, uh, our S3 bucket, and add some uh, uh, new files. Uh, I'm adding a new uh, dummy file. Let me check. Um, I'm dragging uh, uh, one of the test file into S3 bucket, so you can see it's the test of JSON, and uh, I click on upload. So that's the default upload. It's take a few seconds. It's a very small file, and as you can see, the object is there. So now what we can go, we need to make sure the lambda got triggered, right? That's how. How do I verify? Go to CloudWatch, and give it a refresh with this file. It should create a file, as you can see. It's create a, a log file. And if you open it, what you can see uh, the uh, the event actually event because this is a S3 event. You can see it's a, it's come with some record, and it's come with the S3 object. So if you want to see the object actual object uh, the, the this S3, so what we can do um, go to our code quickly. I want to make uh, to show the the object has a all the, the the good stuff if you copy this is the event and what i'm going to do uh, s3 object uh, the event has a records uh, records the array and uh, uh, within the array uh, what we can have uh, let me go have a look so we do have a records and uh, records has a s3 object record the first first uh, first arrow item has a s3 object so if i do this and deploy and it's deploy what i'm going to do i am going to uh, this the s3 bucket and i'm going to delete the existing one and then i'm going to upload the same file again 
yeah since it's deleting okay, that's what i'm going to do i'm uh, uploading the same file again and uh, click on upload so in this time we should have a get you should get more more logs in the cloud watch if i go back again and yeah it's got created a new one and as you can see the s3 object this is s3 object we are we are console consoling and you can see actual object s3 object and the uh, the actual uh, the key is uh, the object name the one that we got uploaded so this is how you integrate with the lambda with the uh, the s3 s3 bucket uh, there are many uh, advanced uh, settings in the s3 bucket so uh, for example life cycle event event uh, sort of thing but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll i'll try to uh, handle the different different session for in this case this is a more like integration so we done with the s3 integration with the lambda so let's go to the next one is sqs again i'm back in a demo function lambda so what i'm gonna do the first thing i'm gonna remove this console log which we use for s3 uh bucket scenario because current now we are going to do the sqs scenario uh, we don't need the s3 uh, log so i'm deploying the code to make sure it's not getting error in the next time so then what we're gonna do i'm creating a sqs a new queue um, I'm quickly go to and create a new queue. Um, uh, give it a name demo one queue uh, queue. Uh, give it a name and uh, keep it all the configuration as a default. Uh, click on the create queue. This will create a queue for us demo queue one. Go back to our demo function. Uh, now what we're gonna do? We're gonna uh, we're gonna add that queue. To our lambda uh, before that I'll uh, open the uh, roles we need uh, this role uh, letter um, then I'm click on the add trigger in this case uh, we're gonna integrate with SQS and yes uh, demo q1 uh, you need to pick the the, the queue we're gonna integrate and if you click on the add more likely you get error as you can see you get error it says you don't have permission to access SQS for the other scenario when we talk when we integrate the s3 it's got default but in this case we don't get usually the aws you need to add explicit permission and so they, therefore uh, make sure you don't if you don't if you get any issue while you are integrating some other service make sure you don't have a, a right permission what i'm going to do i'm updating the the role for which attached to this lambda so i'm open the particular role and go back to my role as you can see it doesn't have any permission to access uh, sqs i'm using edit button and which is which we allow to use visual editor or the json if you are good at with the a json yes you can update uh, through the json or oh, otherwise you can use a visual editor that's a, a easy one what i'm going to do i'm adding a new permission uh, so in this case I'm going to access SQS and over here just a, a sec of simplicity I'm giving give all permission and uh, for any resources so what does it says whoever at whoever attached this role can do anything on SQS on any within this within this account so I'm reviewing policy it says SQS has a full permission that's fine and I click on save right. it's got update the, my role I'm go back to my trigger um, the lambda function I'm click on the add button yeah perfectly now because it does have update permission so it's created now we're gonna do we get uh, we're gonna check the integration so how do we check we go back to our uh, cloud watch and just a refresh and go back to our sqs we're gonna send a message to this queue manually how do you send me uh, the message click on the particular queue uh, in our case uh, demo q1 click on the demo q1 and go back to this uh, you can see the send and receive message in the right top 
and uh, give it a name uh, give it a message so this is a message body test body uh, sqs with lambda and what you need to do you need to just click on the send message seems like it's delivered the message got delivered if i go back to our cloud watch for particular lambda if i give a refresh uh, this is I get uh, 627. Yeah, it's the time uh, If I open this file, you will see the whole uh, SQS message uh, Yeah, it says something wrong. Let's give a shot It's loading. Okay, something goes wrong. Let me check first yeah, it seems, seems uh, something glitch happened in the AWS. Like, but yeah, so you can see the once you open the log file, you can see the new uh, new event, which is our uh, message. I, I tried two times. That's why it's got the two times uh, the message, but it's got today. Uh, if you go inside the message, uh, the event uh, particular uh, console log, you can see uh, the message ID blah 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 plus the body, the test body with the SQS lambda so yeah it, it worked like basically uh, it's pretty easy you just need to uh, add the permission and it just work as a calm so now next uh, we're gonna uh, do a next integration and uh, see you next one hi uh, i'm back in a, a demo function uh, one which is lambda so same way what we did for uh, s3 and sqs it's same pattern you can use for the sns um, I'm not going to do each uh, integration because it's pretty straightforward. You just need to make sure you do have a, 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 you know, the permission, enough permission to access each uh, uh, AWS services. So the one of the other thing I, I'm, I'm going to do how, how to do the uh, DynamoDB um, trigger. So it's pretty same uh, as, as I mentioned in the SQS and S3, but I'll show you how to do in a DynamoDB table, uh, how to trigger something goes to DynamoDB table, it's trigger the Lambda. So uh, for example, currently I already got the, one of the table in the Dynamo table with the, one of the, uh, just a one key. Uh, for example, if I go to the table, it has a, a, a one partition key, which is use ID, right? So how, how do you integrate with this? If I go back, uh, this is the table, uh, explore, the, uh, explore the item because currently we don't have any item. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to demo function and adding the, a new trigger. So at the same way, you need to follow the uh, uh, what we done for the S3 or SQS. And over here, we, we do, we're gonna pick the uh, DynamoDB table. So this is my DynamoDB table, the one that I created. I keep the, all the setting as a, uh, usual. The latest, is, uh, this one is a static position. Okay, whenever you start triggering, when from what position you want to re retrieve the data. So the latest is the best. Basically, let us say whenever you add something, it's bringing the, the latest uh, changes from the dynamic table. It's not bringing uh, from the beginning. So I'm clicking the add button and uh, more likely you get the permission. I won't repeat basically the same thing again. Like permission is one of the best thing in the AWS. But you need to explicitly allow the permission. Uh, as I mentioned, I'll, I'm I'm going to do the uh, separate video for AWS policies and roles, how to create uh, policies uh, for a more granular level permission, uh, not giving the full permission. Uh, it's not recommended to give a full permission, but you need to give a at least permission. So in this case, again, I'm going to uh, take a role and uh, what I'm going to do, I'm updating the uh, existing role to allow DynamoDB table. So I'm gonna edit, uh, same way I did. Um, I'm not gonna go through each item. Okay, so I had to start again. Sorry for that. Uh, I'll go to Visual Studio. And I'm adding a, a new uh, permission. It's only DynamoDB table. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm given the full permission for any resources in this account, not a specific uh, uh, DynamoDB table and review policy. People says, okay, I have 
full permission for any DynamoDB table to do anything on that. So you can see all the um, select uh, policy version to remove. Uh, give me a sec. What does it say? Right, it says uh, uh, you can't keep uh, multiple uh, versions. So I'm gonna remove the older version and create a new one. It's fine because uh, for the given time, it can keep uh, a certain number of version for this uh, particular role. I'm clicking and deleting the very old one. Now the roles got role has a permission to access uh, DynamoDB table. I'm uh, refresh again. I need to uh, do the same thing again uh, because it's my session got expired. I'm adding the table and click on add. So hopefully this is the thing all you just need to do to uh, integrate the DynamoDB table. And if you need more advanced stuff, let put the down the, the comment below. So uh, I'll, I'll cater uh, the specific scenario or complex scenario. Right, everything is fine, should be okay. Now I'm going to open, uh, adding the a new, uh, new item to our DynamoDB table. Let's go here and go to action. Okay, not, uh, not action, so create new item. We need to create item, test uh, one, two, three. Let's say we are adding the new record with uh, a uh, new item. So we can, we can add a new attribute. Uh, let me check. Okay, new attribute here. So let's say uh, name. Let's say uh, we add a new name. So once you create a, a item, uh, it should trigger our Lambda function. Let's go to our Lambda function uh, CloudWatch. I'll refresh again. Hopefully, uh, it should create a, a logs. Let's have a look, uh, give it a re nice refresh. And if I open, uh, right, you can see the new events come. Again, it's uh, come with the record because it could be multiple uh, item. And you can see the Dynamo uh, DB uh, object. So if you want to see the Dynamo DB, what's inside, uh, let's have a look. Uh, if you go to a uh, code, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm uh, logging the actual DynamoDB uh, object. Let's say I'm logging DB object. And what's the event? It's a record and it's a zero portion and uh, DynamoDB deploy. Like what we can do, uh, we will deploy this and go back to our table and we will add a new item. So let's say this is a new, uh, this is second item. We can add a new uh, string. This is the name, it's me, it's me, just create an item. All right, so we added a new item. And if I go back to CloudWatch and give it a refresh, uh, because we, uh, compile the lambda with the new code it's more likely it's create a new log file uh, sometimes it goes to the existing uh, log file sometimes if it is compiled definitely it goes to the new file um, all right so this is the new file if i open the uh, db object uh, this log the one that we added you can see the keys is uh, uh, use id uh, and the test one this is the one we added and the the other one is uh, the name so basically you can see it's me and you side it too right this is how you can integrate dynamodb table with uh, uh, lambda so pretty much same thing you need to follow for the rest of the services as i mentioned i'm not going through the each each uh, item uh, if you need a specific item please comment below and just one thing you need to make sure the specific permission you need to uh, you should have a specific permission or whatever least permission to access each services as far as you have a, a permission you can integrate with the uh, any number of uh, uh, triggers for example as you can see apache kafta alexa uh, load balancer you can do a trigger with the load balancer 
uh, cloud watch that's uh, interesting things and even for the code commit if you're using some code pipeline and code build um yeah that that's pretty much for the today tutorial if you have any question regarding a specific uh, uh, aws service or a specific integration and i'm happy to help or uh, please comment below if you have uh, any question so uh again uh if you like my content please uh, like and subscribe uh see you on next video thanks